Okay, guys, so we're going to um, pick up with Chapter 10 and work our way through these problems. The first thing it's asking about is one exterior angle of a 42 agon. Well, hopefully you remember that all polygons, um, their exterior angles add up to 360. So what we're going to do is 360 to, <laughs> to <laughs> excuse me, divided by the number of sides, which in this case is 42, and that's going to be 8.57. So that's your answer, 360 divided by 42, 8.57 degrees. Um, find the measure of one interior angle of a 32 agon. Well, if you don't remember that formula, it's 180 times n, the number of sides, minus 2, divided by n, the number of sides, because we're finding one interior angle. So we're going to do 180 times 32 minus 2 divided by 32, which will give us 180 times 30 divided by 32, which would be 5,400 divided by 32, which would give you 168.75. All right, on to number 28. All right, this one wants to give you the sum of interior angles, not just one of the interior angles. So it's the same idea as the formula before, 180 and n minus 2. But this time we're not dividing it by the number of sides because we're not trying to find each angle. We're just trying to find all of them. So we're going to do 180 times 28 minus 2, which is going to be 180 times 26, which will give us 4,680. 4,680. All right, find the sum of exterior angles of a 72 agon. Hopefully you heard me or remember me saying that exterior angles always add to 360 no matter how many sides there are, so our answer would simply be 360. For number 30, we're going to have to work backwards. It says, if the sum of interior angles of a regular polygon is 2,340, how many sides does it have? So we're going to take this number and set it equal to the equation for the sum of interior angles, which if you remember from problem 28 was 180 times n minus 2. We don't know what n is, right? That's what we're trying to find. So we're going to start by distributing, and we're going to get 2,340 equals 180n minus 360. And we're going to add 360 to both sides, and we're going to get 2,700 equals 180 n and divide by 180 and divide by 180 and n is going to equal 15. So you would have 15 sides. The next one, 31, is a little bit different. Now we want to find one interior angle. So the same concept, but we need to divide it by the um, uh, number of sides that we're trying to figure out. So. We're going to set up our equation, 180 times n minus 2 over n, right, equals, we know that each angle equals 165. So we're going to set it equal to 165. All right, the first thing I want to do is get rid of this n, so I'm going to multiply both sides by n, and multiply both sides by n, and I'm going to be left with 180 times n minus 2 equals 165 n. Now I'll distribute. <laughs> I'm not really doing good spatial planning here. 180 n minus 360 equals 165 n. So I will subtract 180 n and subtract 180 n, and I'll end up with negative 360 equals um, negative 15n. I'll have to divide by negative 15, 
and divide by negative 15, I'll get n equals 24 sides. All right, the next one. If the measure of one exterior angle of a regular polygon is 12, how many sides does the polygon have? So remember, exterior angles, that's 360 divided by the number of sides, and in this case, it equals 12. So we'll multiply both sides by n. We'll get 360 equals 12 n. Divide by 12, divide by 12, we will end up with 30 sides. Okay, so let's look at this one. I'm going to go ahead and draw a dotted line and call this figure one, and this is going to be figure two. I want to find the area for figure one first, so in order to do that, I'm going to do 12 times 9. And when I do that, I'm going to get 108. Then I want to figure out the area of figure two. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what in the world this base is. So I'm going to do 21 minus 12. And I'm going to get 9. So now I know that this is 9, this is 9. So when I go to find the area, it's going to be 13 times 9, which is going to give me 117. Now, I just need to add those two areas together. So 108 plus 117, and I will get 225 um, units squared. All right, so that's 33. Let's move along to 34. All right, and let's not forget the area equals your base times your height. So I'm going to do 12 times 8. When I do that, I'm going to get 96 units squared. All right, and then for 35 of a regular heptagon. So remember the area is equal to your apothem times your perimeter divided by two. All right, it's telling me that my apothem equals 5.58 and that each side is 14. Well, since I know it's a heptagon, in order to find the perimeter, I'm going to do 14 times 7, all right, because 14 is each side length. I have 7 sides, which will give me 98. So for my area, I'm going to do 5.58 times 98 divided by 2, 546.84 divided by 2, we get 273.42 centimeters squared. Right, find the area of the triangle below. Well, it's a triangle, so the formula for this one is going to be the area equals base times height divided by 2. So my base is 25 times my height, which is 14, and I'm going to divide it by 2. That'll be 350 over 2. When I divide that out, I'll get 175 units squared. Um, all right. Here's where things get a little bit trickier, where we're going to have to use our special right triangles or our trig. And it says, leave an exact form. So, it's once the area. And the area is equal to your apothem times your perimeter divided by 2. All right, well, my perimeter is going to be equal to, if it's a hexagon, 6 times the side length, which is 8, so 48. My apothem is what I need to find. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a hexagon to the best of my ability. Remember, I've got to find my central angle, which is going to be 360 divided by the number of sides, and in this case, 6. So it will be equal to 60. This entire angle is equal to 60 degrees, but I am cutting it in half, and it's going to become 30. This now becomes 60 and that's 90. Don't forget this whole side length originally was 8, so now this is 4 and this is 4. That means that this is n, this is n rad 2, and, I mean <laughs> 2n, and this is n rad 3. So my height, or my apothem, 
is equal to 4 rad 3. So I'm going to do Four rad three times my perimeter, which is forty eight, and divide it by two. So one ninety two rad three divided by two, and I'll get ninety six rad three um, centimeters squared. Okay, so now it's a trapezoid, and the area for that one is equal to B1 plus B2 times your height over 2. So 13 plus 15 times 10 divided by 2. Here's a base, 15, here's another base, 13, and my height, 10. All right, that's going to be 280 divided by 2, which is 140 units squared. Oh my goodness, this is a long chapter too. All right, so now we need to find the height of the trapezoid given its bases, measure 10 and 18, and the area is equal to 26. So I'm gonna take that formula, area equals B1 plus B2 times your height divided by two, and I'm gonna work backwards. So I know that my area is 126. I know that I have a base of 10 and a base of 18, all right? And I'm trying to figure out what my height is. So h, <clears throat> and then part of the formula, divide by 2. All right, so to get rid of that divide by 2, I have to multiply both sides by 2. These cancel out. This becomes 252. I'm going to go ahead and add those together. Oh, the thin lights always turn off on me. And this is going to be 28h. Well, I got to get H alone, so I got to divide by 28 on both sides. When I do that, I get H, my height equals 9. Okay, next up, find the area of a rhombus, a rhombus who has a perimeter of 40 and one diagonal that measures um, to 8 centimeters. So the area for a rhombus is diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. I'm going to go ahead and draw out this rhombus. All right, if the perimeter is 40, this would each side would be 10. Because remember, rhombuses, all sides are congruent. And we have a diagonal that's equal to 8. Don't forget, for a rhombus, the diagonals bisect each other. So we actually know this is 4 and this is 4. The diagonals are also perpendicular to each other. So what we have now is a right triangle, where our hypotenuse is 10 and one of our sides is 4. To find this side, our other diagonal, and our formula, we have to use the Pythagorean Theorem. So it's going to be 4 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. So 16 plus x squared equals 100. We'll subtract and we'll get x squared equals 84. Um, and we'll do an approximation. We'll take the square root and we'll get 9.17. So remember, I need my whole diagonal, though, and that's only a portion of it. So I need to multiply it by 2, or times 2. So diagonal 2 is going to be equal to 18.33. Now I can find my area. My area is equal to 18.33 times 8, my other diagonal, divided by 2. Well, those multiplied by each other are 146.64 divided by 2. When you do that, you get 73.32 centimeters squared. All right, well, here's another rhombus that's a bit easier. This time, we know our diagonal. It's diagonal 1, we can just say is equal to 14. Diagonal 2 is equal to 10. So we're going to do 10 times 14 divided by 2, 140 divided by 2. We will end up with 70 units squared. Okay.
the last one Woo-hoo! for this chapter anyway. Find the area and the circumference of a circle whose diameter is 24 centimeters. Leave pi in the answer. So remember area equals pi times your radius squared and the circumference, there's two equations. You could do 2 pi r or pi times your diameter. Well, I'm going to go for circumference first because I know my diameter is 24. So I'm just going to do 24 pi. Right? If my diameter equals 24, I want to find my radius. I'm going to divide it by 2. So my radius is going to be equal to 12. When I'm finding my area, I'm going to take that 12. I'm going to square it. I'm going to get 144 pi um, centimeters squared. And that is the end of this video.